everyone! Welcome to January Favorites. I didn't do a favorite last month because I was busy doing all the Holy Grail videos, so I have a lot of things to catch you up on. Let's start with the favorites as always, and the absolute number one top of the list is castor oil. I did a video that I have Sjogren's, and that means that my eyes have no moisture and my throat has no moisture. I put these eye drops in, I did a DIY of how I do my eye daytime and nighttime solutions. I honestly could not function without castor oil. That sounds dramatic and extreme, but it's true. I could not leave the house because my eyes would be shut and sore and I wouldn't be able to see. I couldn't wear contacts. I'm now able to wear contacts. It's just heaven. Another thing is I don't have any false lashes on today. And these are my regular, normal, lashes that are normally not very long. I purposely didn't wear false lashes because I wanted you to see from my putting the drops in my eyes, I get it all over, which I like because I'm so dry. So I put it, I kind of purposely smear it all around, but it's getting on my lashes and it's making them super long. Now, if you don't have Sjogren's and don't need it in your eye, I would recommend taking a drop and going and putting it on your eyelashes or using a mascara wand, whatever you're comfortable with. Wow, ah, B. <laughs> Sorry. And then uh, the other thing I do is I put some just on my fingertips and I'm starting to rub it into my brows. So pretty soon I'm going to have Brooke Shields eyebrows. It is amazing stuff. You can use it for so many things. I use it on my cuticles. I've heard some people put it on their scalp. Now I would think even if you're going to go washing your hair, I have no doubt it would make your hair grow, but I think it would be hard to wash out. It is very thick. It is not a thin oil like a vitamin E or anything like that. It is a really, really thick oil, but perfect for what I need it for. It keeps my eyes coated and hydrated all night long. And then in the daytime using less of it, it just adds enough moisture and hydration where I don't feel panicked and having to put eye drops in every few minutes. The second favorite is something that Santa brought me. It's this Every Drop Original Beauty Spatula. Love this thing. The point allows you to get right in on whatever you're scooping out. You get so much out of your products. It's crazy. I have an It Foundation It CC Cream that I'm cutting the top off of. It's never ending. I never realized how much would still be in there. Santa brought me this and I love it. So that is a definite favorite. And the third thing is Alexa. Santa also brought me an Alexa Echo Show, which is the top of the line one with the screen. And I have to admit, when he first brought it, I was like, hmm, a fancy tablet. Isn't that cool? I've got a tablet. And he's like, well, you can look at your all recipes and listen to music. I'm like, I've got a stereo system. I've got a tablet for all recipes. I don't get it. I get it. I love Alexa. Oh my goodness. She can do so many things. Tell me a joke. I don't trust people with graph paper. They're always plotting something. Ask Fitbit how I did today. You met your step goal. You have met your active minutes goal and now have been active for about 55 minutes. All your exercise goals were met. Way to go. I have conversations with Alexa. Alexa and I have talked about books. We've talked about music. We've talked about the color of the sky. I mean, I can't even tell you the conversations we have. Mark just walks in and shakes his head. But that being said, when I'm in the bedroom, I hear him talking to Alexa in the kitchen. So I'm not the only one. She is fabulous. She has a great speaker system. I'm going to get a little Alexa for in the bedroom. I love that I can ask the weather. I can say, put something on my calendar. I can put something on my to-do list. I get up from bed so frequently and go to my phone, which I purposely keep in a different room and add things or look at things that come to my mind before I go to sleep. Well, now I can stay in bed and do all those things once I get myself an Alexa in the bedroom. So I love her. So my appreciations are going to seem strange. I am appreciating my ingenuity, which is because of my Sjogren's. I'm able to talk and I have a great voice day to day. I'm able to have my eyes fine. I can wear my contacts. This was not the case when I first got 
all of these symptoms and the diagnosis. It hasn't been easy, and yet it's my ingenuity that has helped me figure a way out through all of this that works for me. And I'm grateful that I just seem to have that, where it's like, I'm not going to exist with how the doctors tell me, oh, well, that's just how life is with Sjogren's. No, it's not. I can't function. I need to do better. And so I find better. And this is going to sound bizarre, but I feel such appreciation for having been given Sjogren's. And I know you're probably all going, what? You're glad you've got a disease. Yes. I would not have said that when I was first diagnosed. One, I'm able to manage my symptoms, so that makes it easier. But two, sharing it with all of you. So many of you told me you have Sjogren's and so many of you have autoimmune diseases. I hope in some small way I can help someone. But even if my eye drops or other things don't work for you, hopefully just knowing that you're not alone. And that's what you've given to me. And that means so much. And also realizing to be positive and you focus on what you can and just enjoy the rest, enjoy life and try to manage the pain and the other things that aren't within your control. And I know that probably sounds silly, but I am grateful I've been given Sjogren's. I think it is an amazing opportunity and I'm blessed to have this YouTube platform to hopefully help others. And I'm going to cry. A girl who can't make tears is going to cry, but I really am blessed. I really do view this as an opportunity. And that being said, I'm grateful for my good health. And again, you're probably going, Al, you know you just said you have Sjogren's and fibromyalgia and rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. And it's like, good health? What are you talking about? I am blessed. There's so many people that are worse off than I am. And I have something that is manageable and I can live my life. I am not in a hospital bed. I'm not in a wheelchair. I am not housebound. I am able to live my life. And so I have a few things. Everybody has something. And this has made me appreciate my good health. I appreciated it like crazy when I had my cancer and I tried to appreciate it after that. But you do take it for granted. You don't realize. And then something like this comes along and I appreciate my good days so much. I mean, I am like, woohoo, let's run a marathon. And I just, I feel so good. And you really, really have an appreciation for it. I know all those things probably sound crazy, but it's what I've been appreciating this month. We watched Stranger Things and Mark didn't really love it. He didn't hate it, but he didn't see what all the hubbub was about. I liked it a lot. I don't know if I saw the hubbub, but I love Dustin. I loved Elle. I love so many things on there. I thought it was really cute. And we will be watching more of it. So then we finished that and then we went to Wentworth. Love Wentworth. Now I have to admit, it took us both a while to get into it. I love it. Now Mark would say I love it more than him, but he's using some of the words on there and talking an Australian accent. He likes it more than he realizes. <laughs> I love Bee, Queen Bee. I just, we're in season two, I think. Um, who's the governor? She's not a nice person. Mind you, none of the governors have been, but I just, I love all of the characters and Frankie, and they do an amazing job of acting, and I've really been enjoying it. So with my knitting and crochet, I'm usually a one project at a time girl. I like to start something and finish it. I might have a washcloth or something on the side, something. I sometimes have an intricate pattern and a mindless pattern because in that way, depending on my mood, I can work on whatever I want. I realized that I was not crocheting because I was procrastinating on my jacket. It will only take me a few hours to finish. I have no excuse, but whatever the reason is, when we go downstairs at night, Mark likes the lights lower for when we watch television and to pull it out and figure out the pieces and where I'm at, untangle the yarn <laughs> and get started again. I just, I don't do it. And so then I sit there and I don't work on anything. So Heidi Isaacson, thank you for this, Heidi. She left me a comment telling me about, I'm gonna have to put the name of it. It's some kind of crochet Cracker Jack waffle stitch. This is very similar to uh, waffle stitch or box stitch. Um, it's called a checkerboard pattern in knitting where you 
knit one, purl two, knit one, and then you purl your purls and knit your knits on the reverse side. This is the same thing where you have the four stitches and you're double crocheting under one post and then into the two under one post and then on the way back you reverse where you double crochet in this and go under a post under a post and double crochet hopefully that makes sense if not google it and you'll find somebody who can explain it better than i can which wouldn't take much but thank you heidi i'm loving this i'm doing it as a baby afghan and i've also done it as a washcloth and i'm really enjoying this pattern it's mindless as you said and it's fun it's easy so very much been enjoying that so Olivia is still playing hockey on her AAA team. I posted a video on my Facebook page and on my um, blog, and I'll try to link it below if I remember, of a television interview she had with Shaw, which is a major network in Canada, of her and her hockey coach. She's been doing well, although she had a breakup with her boyfriend of, I don't know how many years she's been seeing him. So that, of course, is difficult, but it's part of life, and I told her, the reason things happen is for a reason and there's someone better waiting for you and you need to be open to it and she realized this and she's I told her to visualize her future and that he's not the one that that's meant to be with but her future is waiting for her and she just has to get there and make it happen she's also quite stressed I think her perfectionist attitude makes her so good at everything but it also makes her put a lot of pressure on herself and she's quite stressed about getting uh, good enough grade. She's trying for several scholarships to help her with her college and she is stressed also about getting into college and you know all the normal things of a senior that age that they're dealing with and like I said I think her perfectionist attitude serves her well but I also think she needs to understand that there's always something and this is just life and you've just got to do the best you can and realize it's all going to work out. Maybe that's something that comes with age because I know that I was probably more like her when I was her age as well. So I don't know if you've been able to see any of the hummingbirds. They are everywhere. There's a little guy who keeps coming up over here checking me out. So hopefully you're able to see a few of them. And I appreciate your spending time with me. Let me know what's been going on with you. How was your month of January? And what were some of the fabulous things that happened to you? Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you next time.